Yeah, uh, looks like we should be on YouTube now. Uh, when I just guessed, uh, check and let us give a confirmation that if things are getting live streamed on YouTube, um, then uh, great. And uh, we should be good to start if you guys have uh, said everything to go great. Uh, right. So yeah, so yeah, great. We are on uh, YouTube now. So by the way, uh, hey Hello. everyone, uh, good evening again to all of you. Uh, warm welcome uh, to all of you for the day two of uh, electric vehicle powertrain bootcamp. So in today's session, uh, we will be covering the topic on powertrain sizing. And uh, here we will do a lot of hand calculations and you know, uh, fundamental uh, revamp so that you will be able to work out a basic approach of calculating the motor size and battery size. But though it is not everything that you could learn today, uh, it, it would require you extensive amount of time to spend on properly doing a sizing. But it is just a basic approach that you can understand, you know, how do you, how you can approach the component sizing. Uh, we have our senior simulation engineer, Krishna, here uh, today on the session to deliver the topic uh, for, uh, for you guys. So over to you, Krishna, to take ahead the session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, so uh, like myself, Krishna, so I will be like presenting over the powertrain sizing. So we'll be, first we'll try to introduce uh, like in terms of theoretical approach, like how, what we can uh, in a theoretical aspect, then uh, like after studying some theoretical aspects and we'll directly jump into the Excel sheet. So we'll be doing some hand calculations. So, yeah. So if we talk about the agenda uh, like first uh, like we'll be discussing about on the vehicle side uh, like what are the parameters will be affecting on the vehicle side okay so if, if the vehicle wants to move like there will be some resistance so we'll be getting to know like what are those resistance so those all comes on the vehicle side yeah and then uh, like based on the requirement uh, like on the vehicle set okay so what should be the motor size and the battery size so that we can do okay like we can say those are like component sizing yeah so first uh, like we'll start with uh, this or uh, like vehicle side and then like we'll move into the driveline dynamics okay yeah. So basically, uh, like we will be following a wheel to well uh, approach. Okay, getting to know what is required at the wheel side. So, uh, like I'll just uh, like jump into the part here. Yeah. So here, if you see, let me bring the yeah. So if you see here, uh, like as we were discussing, that is uh, the vehicle body side that we defined it as a longitudinal dynamics okay so whatever the required at the wheel side or um, maybe like we'll talk or the wheel speed so based on that we'll be sizing our motor and the battery so we'll be going in the reverse okay it means like backward facing yeah so first uh, like we'll try to calculate what is required at the wheel side. So to calculate the wheel side, we should be knowing uh, the resistive forces, okay? So we'll first, uh, like, we'll get to know, like, what are the resistive forces? Yeah. So here, uh, like, on the vehicle side, or like as I mentioned the equation here. So how the equation or uh, like if you if you say that how the equation is there, it's just a balancing of the equations. Okay. Or uh, like based on the Newton's law, that is M F is equal to M into A. Okay. So or uh, like aerodynamic force will be against our vehicle motion. And rolling resistance will be our against our vehicle motion. 
and the gradient force. So like it's also against our vertical motion. Okay. So acceleration force or uh, like which is required or uh, like to overcome the static resistance and also uh, like to reach the required velocity. Okay. Or uh, like to reach some required speed or to overcome that torque while in the movement. So what is the acceleration force required? Uh, for to estimate that we are we required uh, like we are going to consider uh, that uh, as a part of it. Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, like what exactly they define here. Okay. So like total tractive force or the longitudinal force. Oh. Uh, so. If, if I just reverse this equation, right? So I will be like, this is considered as a total tractive force. So total tractive force equal to F arrow, that is aerodynamic force plus rolling force plus grade plus of uh, acceleration force. Okay. So here, uh, like if we calculate or like estimate each uh, resistive forces, or uh, like we'll get the total tractive force. So based on that, uh, by having the total tractive force, we can go for estimating the wheel torque and the wheel speed, or uh, like all the stuff. Okay. So. First, we estimate uh, like aerodynamic force or the rolling force or gradient force or acceleration force. Uh, like we should be knowing like what parameters are influencing the aerodynamic force or like maybe uh, rolling force or like in overall the resistive forces. So that particular part uh, like we'll look into it. So here we'll be going each one uh, like rolling and grade uh, like aerodynamic force. I will just try to define uh, it and also like the equation part of it and the gradient. Okay, yeah. So here, uh, like, I'll start with the rolling resistance. So here, uh, like, first I have mentioned the equation here, like. The different uh, types of equation here, or uh, like again, or uh, like some they are uh, equations are like dynamic in nature, uh, so they will be giving results in dynamic. Like it's con continuously varying because of some other parameters influencing on it. Okay, so for our calculation, we will be using our a generic equation. Okay like FRR equal to CRR multiplied with GVW, okay? Yeah. So if you see this particular equation, uh, like it is dependent on pressure and the velocity, okay? So uh, if you see uh, like, what are the parameters affecting on the Rolling resistance, or uh, like some or uh, like many parameters will be affecting the rolling resistance. Like uh, in that, uh, we can consider weight, pressure of your tire. Okay, and the road roughness. And your design material okay yeah so how exactly uh, like they are going to or uh, like each one is going to affect so we'll be like look into some points so if you consider the design right so if you see uh, like there will be a tire of a different width sizes. Okay. 
some will be like uh, small width sizes and some will be of like uh, bigger width sizes so as the width of your tire is going to increase uh, the contact patch okay this is what we define the, as a contact patch with respect to the road or uh, like any surface area and to the tire which is in contact with the some surface okay so if the width of the tire uh, like if it is in uh, like bigger so obviously the contact patch is going to increase compared to your like smaller width of your uh, tire okay this is like one of the the parameter obviously again in the tire pressure uh, like when you have like let's say i hope like you have experience in the real time but like based on your uh, tire pressure so if you see this particular graph like right, how it's influencing like has the tire pressure goes on like decreasing it's like it's going to affect of um, more coefficient of rolling resistance okay if crr value increases right uh, which is directly proportional with the constant this is constant okay so it is like it's also like uh, proportional to its value that is fr okay so if the other value increases obviously the rolling resistance is going to increase so yeah this is one of the parameter here yeah? so if you see uh, like for different road conditions uh, to their respective surfaces okay uh, like tires and to their respective surfaces maybe like concrete road or sand or like asphalt or anything so they will be having some different crr value okay so uh, like each uh, like different crr value is going to influence on the rolling resistance uh, yeah we yeah so again uh, like the temperature like it's also going to affect okay so yeah and even uh, like if you consider like the material as i was mentioning for different material or uh, like there will be like some different uh, rolling resistances or uh, like again depends on the pressure okay so if i consider uh, like some material like if i try to define the material there will be a uh, losses okay so as your wheel some top part of your wheel as it rotates it will come in contact with the surface so then it is it means it is getting uh, like load on it it means it is getting pressurized on it so at that time it, it uh, like you are nothing but you are adding a load okay or uh, like somewhere the graph comes in this pattern or uh, like a characteristic curve so now as uh, like you unload or uh, like has for the further further rotation of your wheel then the graph is going to appear in this pattern so it's not going to follow the same path while it's coming back when it is unloaded so there will be some like energy losses at the each time so we call it as like hysteresis losses okay yeah so so this is about like the parameters of the rolling resistances uh, which is influencing the rolling resistance we so we can also like uh, check into more uh, parameters affecting on it i just uh, discuss some points okay so here uh, like we got to know what should be the equation let me show that equation again so need to take down this equation or uh, like we will be using in our or uh, like excel sheet yeah so next uh, like we will look into the error on the course so here if you see the equation uh, like you can get to know like what are the parameters are affecting 
uh, later down, of course. Okay. So it is nothing but uh, like air is adding a resistance to a vehicle motion. Okay. That is how like we define in the simplest way. So this is your like generic equation we'll be using uh, in our Excel sheet. Okay. So if you see some alternative equations here, uh, like what I have made, made changes here, like I'm just adding uh, like UW, which is nothing but a velocity, velocity of your wind. So in the extreme or uh, like wind blow condition, uh, like we have to include these, uh, like whether the wind is against our vehicle motion, then we have to add, or uh, like if you are moving along with the wind direction, then we have to subtract it. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, like we have to consider only in extreme condition. So here, like aerodynamic force uh, is equal to 0.5 rho uh, and central area of your vehicle, CD, that is coefficient of that and V squared. Okay. So here, uh, like all the parameters are uh, like directly proportional to the aerodynamic force. If any one of increases, it's going to influence on the aerodynamic force. Yeah. So we'll just look into it how, uh, like these, uh, the equation, or uh, like, sorry, how these parameters are going to be affected like, on what influences. Okay. First, the CD value, which we were discussing here. So it depends on like uh, the size and shape of your object. Okay, so for the different object conditions, you can see the different CD value. Okay, if you see, uh, like for the streamlined body and for uh, half streamlined body, you can see uh, the lowest CD value compared to the others. Okay, yeah. So, uh, like if you see uh, like most of your cars or like or like they are belonging to your like streamlined body itself okay even uh, the planes or like they always like belongs to the streamlined body yeah so again it depends on like size and shape yeah and then uh, like one more parameter that is velocity. So if you see this uh, the equation again, or uh, like it is v square here, okay, which is directly proportional to the aerodynamic force. So, like as uh, the velocity of your vehicle increases, the aerodynamic force, uh, like is going to increase, okay, yeah, and how the air density is going to influence. So in the different region of your country, like there might be a difference in uh, air density. Again, it depends on uh, like, if you, let's say like, if you are in the colder countries or like cold regions countries, they are going to find with higher air density compared to your uh, like in the countries which have like high temperature. Okay. So again, uh, like that is going to influence because like they are directly proportional to each other, okay? Yeah. So here, uh, like again in the drag, right? To estimate the drag coefficient, like there are different uh, types of drag coefficients, like skin, friction drag, pressure drag, inference drag, okay? Uh, like I won't be discussing much into this one. You can just like look into uh, some Google or anything, okay? These are like uh, some tests we can conduct to estimate the drag coefficient. Okay, like coast down test or wind tunnel test or like tool based simulations. Yeah. You can just look into this one. So, uh, like we were discussing this equation, right? So, just try to take down this equation. So, we'll be using our Excel sheet.
Okay. Now, uh, like. So here, uh, like we are done with like rolling resistance. Uh, aerodynamic. And now we like we look into the gradient. So like let's assume like uh, if you're trying to like go in the flat out condition. So there will be some uh, like efforts required. So if the same or uh, like if if the road is in some incline. Okay, with some angle. Okay, so you cannot say that the same effort is uh, enough to climb up this hill or like some up to the road condition. Okay, so here uh, there will be uh, like a parameter of your weight as a as a part of your vector. It will be influencing. Uh, so we call it as a like grade uh, resistance. Okay. Yeah. So to calculate this grade force, okay, we just keep this part. We'll be using this particular equation. Like the purpose of mentioning the plus or minus here. Uh, if you are uh, like going uphill condition, like we have to uh, like add up in the total tractive force. Otherwise, like we have to subtract if we are like going in the downhill condition. Okay. Yeah. So I will define these terms like when we uh, like what is GVM, GVW, like when we uh, start doing the calculations. Okay. So, like as I was uh, like defining about acceleration force. Okay, many people like will be thinking that why we're adding uh, into the tractive forces side, uh, means along with the resistive forces, we are also going to add your acceleration forces, which is not at all a resistive force. Okay, so why it is because, so consider this is a kind of object here. So there is some resistances uh, for the on the rolling side. Uh, let's say like some fine Newton kind of and a aerodynamic force like 15 Newton. Okay. So uh, let's assume like it's a flat out condition. So it means a gradient force is a zero. So if you're trying to apply 50 Newton here, or uh, like if you add up these two, we'll like total Resistance is nothing but 55 Newton. Okay. So if you if you are trying to add 15 Newton here, or like if you're trying to apply 15 Newton here, so still uh, like object is not going to move. So if I add uh, like five more Newton, uh, then the uh, like the values are going to balance. Okay. At this condition, if you are adding uh, like if you are applying the 55. And your resistance is like 55. So if I just make it 56, so this object or uh, like will start moving with some, uh, let's assume like one meter per second. Okay, I'm just assuming some number. Here, okay, yeah. So if I make it like instead of 56. I'll just make it 60. So then it will be start moving with 5 meter per second. Okay. I'm just assuming these numbers. Yeah. If I make it like 100, so it will be like start moving with uh, like 50 meter per second. So here the acceleration force, it's acts in such a way that it has first whatever the force you are applying, right? Uh, from your part of your power trend side. So it has to overcome all the resistive forces and it has to uh, like achieve the desired speed. Okay. Yeah. So in order to like 
calculate the, those things. Uh, that's why like we need to like add the acceleration force. Okay. Now, uh, like we got to know on the wheel side. Okay. No, oh, sorry. On the vehicle body side. So, like we got to know like what are the resistive forces, or uh, like which are influencing on the vehicle body side. Then, uh, like we'll get to know about wheel torque and the wheel speed. So, if you when, once you like get to know like how to estimate aerodynamic force, wheeling force, gradient, and acceleration force, like we can just add up all the forces and we'll end up with total tractive force. Okay. So once you get to know the total tractive force, uh, with knowing the wheel dia, or uh, like the radius of your wheel, okay, just make it R here. So we can calculate torque. So force into meter, that is, let me write it properly here. Newton into meter, so we'll get like newton meter. So and convert uh, like velocity into like wheel speed, or uh, like in RPM. So by using this equation, okay, yeah. Or uh, like I hope like you have like already learned this in your engineering. So for now, like we got to know what is required at the vehicle side that is wheel torque and the wheel speed now like we'll be moving into the transmission side okay so or uh, i'll just leave this part yeah so here or uh, like again or uh, like modeling the transmission or uh, like sizing the exact gear issues required again it's a completely different topic so what I'm going to do, like I'm going to consider some gear issue here, or uh, like of a known vehicle. Okay. So I'll be like multiplying with the wheel speed so that I can get to know the motor speed. So to calculate the motor torque, I'll be using wheel torque divided by gear ratio multiplied with uh, transmission efficiency. So there is always a loss at each component. Okay. Yeah. So, like we just looked into vehicle body side, transmission, and now the motor. That is. Okay. So, we got to know, like, what is motor speed and the motor or uh, like torque here? Okay, output of your transmission. Anyhow, yeah, like we are going in reverse order. So now we are going to calculate uh, like motor output power, the power which is uh, like at the output side of the motor. Okay, by using a simple equation that is uh, like 2 pi nt upon 60. Okay. So n is nothing but your wheel uh, motor speed. T is nothing but your motor torque. So if you know the efficiency of your motor, or like you can estimate motor input power. Okay. So if this is your motor, right? You are trying to add some or uh, like power to the motor, or like through some phase current. Okay. Uh, let's say like you're adding some 100 watt kind of the output will be like getting anti watt in terms of like rotational motion that is shaft. So here uh, there is some 10% of loss. Okay. So that we consider it as the efficiency. So uh, like here yeah. will be considering efficiency map. So here, uh, like if you know the efficiency of your motor, you can estimate the motor input power. 
So once you know the motor input power, uh, like get to know the battery power. So again, between motor and the battery, there will be another component that is a controller, motor controller, which comes into the uh, like sector of uh, like power electronics. Okay. So like a lot of components will be there in the motor controller. Okay. So there will be some losses. Uh, like while converting uh, like two phase current into like three phase. Okay. DC to AC. Okay. Yeah. So if you consider motor controller loss, uh, like you can get to know like what is required at the battery cell. Okay. Yeah. So now, uh, like I suggest you to open uh, let me open on my side. Yeah. So I hope everyone has received this uh, like drive cycle or the Excel sheet. Just let me know in the chat box. Now, uh, like we'll just uh, try to like input some parameter. I'll I'm just going to uh, like bring out the next sheet here. Uh, I'll just consider it as sheet one. I'll just name it as power train rising. Okay, yeah. So I just mentioned a heading here, input parameters, and the values. So I'll just go on typing out The input parameters required here. See, yeah, that that is nothing but a um, running coefficient. So, coefficient of rolling distance. So, 0 0.015. A general value I'm considering here. And vehicle mass. Will be considering like 111 driver mass let's consider like uh, 80 or 70 okay yeah and we radius We'll be considering 0.1524. Okay. So air density, just let it row. That is 1.22. So now, uh, like frontal area of your vehicle. That is 0.875. And gear issue. That is 7.8. And transmission and efficiency. Point eight five. Motor efficiency. Point nine. And now, like motor controller efficiency, 
and just like taking like a dip from point is fine. Okay. Yeah. And position of or oh, sorry. Oh, like position due to gravity, that is G. Nine point eight one. No. Like as I was mentioning, G V M is nothing but or uh, like driver mass plus vehicle mass. Okay. So or uh, like we got to know like what is vehicle mass and the driver mass. We will just try to represent it here. GVM equal to sorry. Here I have to mention equals. I have to select all the B3 and I have to add a B plus and seven and B4. So I end up with adding up those two numbers. No GVW. So G V or W. So we got to know like G V M is multiplied with acceleration due to gravity. Okay. So this is gross vehicle weight. Okay. So now like what I'm going to do. We just Multiply okay. equal sign so like GVM multiply with more like acceleration due to gravity. Okay. It will be so oh, let's put it. G, keep it empty. This one. Okay, we did it. Just a few more. Okay, and then until I get it does great. Here you show okay. efficiency. Yeah. Newton for which are square. Which yeah. So now, uh, like what we are going to do, uh, we just try to like. Bring our drive cycle. So just control C, go to here, like portrait sizing, and just paste it here. Okay. So presently, uh, like these are in kilometer kph. Okay. So I need to convert into meter per second. So what I'm going to do, uh, like uh, here I'll just write well. I'm I'm just uh, like I will end up with VL uh, in shortcut. Okay, meter per second. So here equal sign. Bring a thousand. Okay, you can select velocity. Multiply with thousand divided by three thousand six hundred. 
So say enter. Okay, just drag or it should work by double click at this particular point. I don't know like why it's not working. Just drag till the end of your drive cycle. Yeah. Okay. So let me plot this drive cycle. So this is how like your dry cycle looks like. Okay. So it will be like having uh, like velocity or uh, like with respect to the time, which will be like changing. Okay. Yeah. So it will be like including all like maybe let's say like uh, any traffic in your like and or uh, like humps in the road, like all will be considered in the dry cycles. Okay, again, like it's a different topic. Okay. So there will be like some different, uh, like based on road condition, we are going to define as a different tricycles. Like, let's say like urban tricycle or like rural tricycle, highway tricycle. So your speed and like the torques of your vehicle will be different at like high traffic city conditions compared with your or like highway condition. Okay. So it, it's uh, like depends. Yeah. So we'll just get to know like how we can make use of this tricycle to size the motor. So we'll just quickly jump into the equations here. Yeah. So first, uh, like we'll calculate wheel speed. So we know the equation that is equal to 16 to V divided by two pi RW. So we'll just try to put this equation here. 16 multiplied with velocity. Okay, divided by, I'll just bring a bra bracket to this, bring multiplication pi, that is 3.142, bring multiplication, that is RW, that is uh, like field radius. So this is your field radius. So, so this is uh, like a constant term, which has to be filled at this particular equation to constantly the same value has to be filled to all the velocities as we go on in, uh, like calculating the wheel speed. For that, I need to bring a dollar symbol here. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, now it's getting working that particular point. Yeah. Now, uh, like we'll calculate the wheel top. So to calculate the wheel top, like we require uh, resistive forces. So first I will start with uh, like aerodynamic force. I'll just mention it F arrow. Yeah. So equal to 0.5 multiplied with uh, Field density again multiplied with frontal area, not the ratio, so frontal area, and one more, oh, that is coefficient of drag. Okay, I think I have not mentioned here the coefficient of drag. Let me mention it here, just give me a second. For now, I'll just delete this one. Okay, I will mention it here. CD. I will be considering CD as 0.22. So let me write it 
multiplied with uh, a density frontal area and then uh, like cd and velocity i'm going to multiply again okay we need v square you can also use option like power or like there is something like power of option is there okay you can just try uh, with that let me cancel this one. yeah bring a bracket on both the side same time okay now it's not working so let me drag it okay uh like the purpose of having zeros uh, because for all these constants i need to add a dollar symbol so yeah otherwise uh, like the next value will be like consider which will be like completely zero now if i say enter okay now if i yeah now we are getting some values here okay let me check it yeah the trend of the velocity the trend line of the velocity and the dynamic force is going to remain the same because uh, like it is directly proportional to the velocity right so yeah now like rolling distance okay i'll just say f yeah, dash roll equal to g v w multiplied with or uh, like 0. G C R R. So I have to bring uh, like dollar symbol here. Say enter. Okay. Okay. For this also I have to bring. Sorry. Dollar symbol. Okay, let me correct it properly. Yeah. Um, here, uh, like you can see, like it's going to remain same. It is because of uh, like GVW and CRR is not varying with respect to the velocity. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, like, we'll try to neglect the grade uh, because uh, we like presently like we don't have that data. So we consider grade equal to zero here. So grade angle. So obviously we're going to get zero as output. Okay. Yeah. And we'll try to calculate the acceleration force here. Okay, so we just know like F is equal to mass into acceleration. So mass, we are going to get it from GVM, okay? And acceleration, like we have to derive from the velocity, okay? Yeah. So we know like acceleration is nothing but uh, like meter per second square, okay? The rate of change of velocity that is how we like we are going to define so here i will I'll just try to take the two intervals uh, okay so v or like h4 minus h2 you just add a close bracket and the open bracket for it and i'm going to bring a multiplication sign here to multiply with 
GVI. And uh, let's divide by two. Okay, enter. So what have you done? Uh, like, let's say like V2, sorry, V4 minus V2, uh, like divided by two, okay? So how the two has appeared? Uh, like T4 minus T2. So if you try to like do it here, right? The value is going to remain same here. So the two, so I just consider two directly. Yeah. Now this is uh, going to get your acceleration value. Now if you multiply mass, you're going to get acceleration force. Okay. Yeah, I have to consider dollar symbol here. Yeah. Okay. So somewhat we are getting the data here. Okay. So now, uh, next, uh, like we'll try to work on the next uh, to calculate the total tractive force. So, for to calculate the total tractive force, like we need to add up all the forces. So here, or oh, like I'm going to write it here, total tractive force equal to F arrow, F rho, acceleration. I have to bring plus and right, plus. Same term. Okay. Okay, it's not working. Let me drag. So this is a total tractive force. So to calculate the wheel torque, wheel torque, I need to multiply with the total tractive force, multiply with wheel radius. Okay, wheel radius multiply with total tractive force. So to the wheel radius, I need to add dollar symbol before B and after B. Okay, say enter. Yeah. So this is the like wheel talk required. So we got to know like what is wheel speed here in the wheel talk here. So now we can calculate uh, by knowing the gear ratio uh, like motor speed and the motor talk. So here I'm going to mention motor top. Okay. So motor top, like we already went to know the equation. It is wheel top divided by gear ratio multiplied with transmission efficiency. So here the efficiency value is going to vary. Uh, like, but we consider as a zero. Oh, like, sorry, a constant value. So we'll talk divided by gear ratio multiplied with transmission efficiency. So I need to add dollar symbol. Same term. So now we can calculate motor speed. It's a simple straightforward. Let's just multiply wheel speed into the gear ratio. Gear ratio, add a dollar symbol. Okay. 
multiply with wheel speed. Say enter. Yeah. So once you calculate the motor torque and the motor speed, you can go for estimating motor power. That is motor output power. So here, like two pi, that is three point one four two two pi n. N is nothing but your wheel speed. Okay, and then bring a multiplication sign. Talk that is nothing but t divided by sixty. Say enter. Okay, yeah. So this is motor output power. So in order to calculate the motor input power, you should be having uh, like motor efficiency. Like we already like studied like how the efficiency uh, like we are going to get. Okay. So motor in power. motor output power divided by motor control efficiency so here i need to add dollar symbol yeah say enter okay so this is motor power so if we include or uh, like motor control efficiency with that we can calculate Battery power. Okay, so equal to motor power divided by motor control efficiency. Sorry, yeah. I had a dollar symbol before and after B. Say enter. So like these are in watts, okay? The power is in watts. Motor power is in watts. Yeah. So further you can calculate battery energy just multiplying with the time. Okay. Yeah. So like we'll try to end up with here, uh, like with respect to the calculation part. Now we'll try to like discuss here. With respect to the results so just put up a uh, velocity graph here motor torque okay. and motor speed You just like try to bring motor power also. So, like if you see this uh, particular tricycle, right? Okay. Well, it's the same trend of the tricycle has been followed to the motor speed because, uh, like, if you want to analyze in terms of equation, uh, like we got to know, like. When we convert the velocity into the wheel speed, uh, like we are going to directly multiply with the gear ratio. So the same trend of part you are, you are going to get here, okay, on the motor speed side. So if you consider the motor torque, like that you are going to get it here, like when you are trying to, uh, like increase your accelerations. Uh, like from zero speed to like some speed, okay. So at top speed, or uh, like your curve is going to like the top curve is going to come down. If you like know the characteristic curve of your motor, okay. You just plot motor top versus motor speed. Yeah. 
this is how like motor torque versus motor speed curve at low rpms this is the area where the low rpms are going to have a like higher torque as the speed increases of your motor the like as the speed increases your torque is going to decrease okay yeah so the similar or uh, like the torque or like what the characteristic curve of your motor is there right it is a similar requirement for your vehicle initially like for your vehicle to come out of your like all the static condition it requires high torques so as it gets a momentum like the torque is going to reduce so we can the high speeds or like you are not going to get much like torques here okay and uh, like and the motor power is a straight forward equation so we'll be multiplying the torque and the motor speed okay yeah so at the high speeds or like irrespective of torque values you are going to get you need high power like motor has to supply high power so when it comes into the servicing part or like let's say like if you are trying to get a motor like we will be defining that is a motor or like let's take torque as a parameter so we will be like defining the torque or nominal torque or the continuous or like or the rated okay and the peak torque so basically uh, like this particular velocity right this is any dc dicycle any dicycle that is new european or like dicycle okay and yeah so here uh, like it said the highway drive cycle okay so like when you are like if you want to consider the peak torque or uh, like you need to consider it from the x uh, like acceleration performance like curves okay on that basis drive cycle so if you want to consider uh, like continuous torque or the nominal torques uh, that have to go for like city rides like some or uh, like mid traffic highway road conditions kind of okay yeah so from this particular graph if you want to size the values so you can just consider like you can just like consider like 4 to 6 as your band for your continuous torque or the nominal torque which covers all of your torque requirements okay so don't worry about this negative part or uh, like that is nothing but your region yeah so again uh, like if you consider or uh, like acceleration based or uh, like curve like velocity curve it will be in this pattern so the torque required the torque graph will be in some way like in this pattern okay so at that time or uh, like you have to consider the peak torques so even in terms of like power of for your motor in terms of watts or the kilowatts so for the nominal or like you can go for this range like near to 2 kilowatt so for the max you can go for like 3 kilowatt okay which can cover up all your power requirements okay yeah so this is about like motor side so on the battery side uh, like will be just considering uh, like efficiency of it so it doesn't make much changes with respect to the battery side yeah so here it's completes your like today session uh, just let me know like if you have any kind of questions with respect to uh, these or uh, let's see them